Hello amateurs and welcome back to the channel. In the aftermath of the Six Nations, World Rugby has moved really quickly to outline some new plans to enhance rugby's global appeal. Sounds magnificent, doesn't it? And fair play to World Rugby for getting out there and trying to improve things. They go on to say, World Rugby has outlined the next steps in the process of reimagining rugby's entertainment factor, part of a wider mission to grow audience share over the next decade. Now, you know, I think growth is good. I think if you're not growing, then you're, you're pretty much going backwards. You, you can't really stand still in this world that we live in anymore. So although I'm very keen for the game to grow, I'm keen for it to find new audiences and find people around the world that want to play it. Um, I just want to make sure for me, that, that we don't lose the core values of the game, we don't lose the core tenets of what makes it the sport that all of us have loved for a very long time. So as we go through these things, just try and think of it in those terms, you know, is this good? Is this going to improve the game? Is it still going to be the game that we know and love? So World Rugby go on to say some quite uh, glitzy sort of statements in saying that rugby is united in, in its drive to enhance entertainment value to broaden appeal. Sounds okay to me. And uh, they're very keen to point out that they've actioned these points really swiftly from the Shape of the Game forum, which was actually only earlier this month. So, you know, big organisations like this can often be accused of sitting on their hands and not moving quickly. That's certainly not the case here. And this is a package of, of enhancements aimed at advancing on and off field experience. So looking at the game itself and then also how it's viewed by spectators, whether that's in the ground or on TV. Now, this, <laughs> this package comes in five phases. Um, some that are actioned immediately and some for the future. So in this video, I'm just going to be looking at the first two phases. If you want me to go through phases three, and three, four and five, let me know in the comments down below and I'll do a follow up. But for now, just the first couple of phases. And the idea is to grow relevance and accessibility among a broader, younger audience. Evolution, evolution is focused on enhancing ball in flow reducing stoppages and increasing welfare outcomes. Again, all very valid um, aims, I believe. Certainly, rugby's audience is, is sort of older, I, su I suggest, you know, um, the younger generation coming through have got lower attention spans and need to be attracted in ways that maybe wouldn't attract people like me. So they're aware of that and are trying to address it. Now, interesting use of the phrase ball in flow as opposed to ball in play because not all ball in play time is that engaging. Thinking of the long kick tennis rallies that we see sometimes, the box kicking with the caterpillar rucks, you know, some of that is probably not regarded as ball in flow. So seeing more of that is a good idea. And again, there's quite a few stoppages in the game at the moment. So reducing those, I think, helps flow as well, helps make it a more concise engaging product. Okay, let's get into phase one. And these are law application guidelines and they're all about reinforcing the existing law, which I think, you know, if you listen to podcasts like this and all the other ones, you know, there's a lot of people that say the laws are actually just fine. We just need to enforce them. And there's some good examples here. So uh, the ball at the back of the rock will be expected, sorry, rock or more uh, will be expected to be moved uh, much more quickly, uh, referees will be asked to call use it earlier, which will then begin the five second count to play the ball away. We definitely see referees waiting until the ball is really completely available, then they call the five seconds and even then it can go on another, well, upwards of 10 seconds sometimes I'm sure. So it'll be interesting to see how strictly that is adhered to. Um, I've got some ideas around this myself and I'm considering making a video about the caterpillar ruck and the box kicking. Uh, if you want to see that, let me know in the comments down below as well because I've got some sort of extended ideas about how this could be sorted out, shall we say. Uh, the next one that they are enforcing is the break foot for the hookers. 
to aid scrum stability and I guess this is a welfare issue now interestingly I hadn't I wasn't aware that this was an issue at all that um, the break foot was not being adhered to certainly referees haven't been calling it if that's the case so maybe that's the thing maybe behind the scenes they've been looking at all these scrums and they're checking the ones that have been unstable and actually the break foot hasn't been in place and that's the issue I'd be interested to know if anybody has seen any of that research uh, because certainly watching through the TV no idea that this was a problem and the last one is strict reinforcement of the 2022 law trial relating to water carriers entering the field of play and yeah this was just a case of only only on the referees command I think was was basically the idea um, because there was a period of time particularly during COVID when they were just on the field all the time and it just sucked, sucked the game down to a a slow crawl and you had to clear them all off again and uh, yeah it was a pain and you know after water carrier Neil Jenkins's uh, antics this past weekend you know I can see why that is being enforced again hoping to improve uh, the speed of the game the flow of the game all those things okay that's phase one done fairly straightforward really and all I think very agreeable on to phase two, and these are law amendment recommendations for global adoption. Uh, so this is a package of law amendments which will be considered by the World Rugby Council at its meeting on May the 9th. And each of them is all about continuity. So uh, we're again looking to improve flow, ball in flow time, getting rid of stoppages. Okay, the first one is a recommendation to make adjustments to law 10 in relation to players being put on side when there are kicks in open play so this is the DuPont law loophole that everybody sort of knows about its aim is to reduce the kick tennis now I actually don't think it will that much I don't think it makes a huge amount of difference to the kick tennis battles you know I think those are two teams that are, you know kicking 22 to 22 and the chances of somebody counter-attacking from there are minimal regardless of this deposit loophole however it does look ridiculous the, the situation that this loophole uh, put into the game so I'm very happy that it's gone even if it's just to clear it up and make people not go what on earth is this all about so I'm not sure it's going to reduce kick tennis but I am glad that that's gone the next one is a very interesting one and could come with a lot of controversy I think removal of the scrum option from a free kick at a scrum so this is the aim of this is to reduce dead time in the game but for me I think this needs to be policed and I think it needs to be broadened out in to how this is going to be refereed because this gives it you know on the face of it it gives license for teams that are no good at scrummaging or choose not to even compete at scrummaging to just give away free kicks by an early engage and therefore not have to scrum at all you know so I'm certain coaches around the world are going oh brilliant we're terrible at scrummaging this is going to solve all our problems so I think what needs to happen here is that maybe it's a free kick at the first one if they do it again it gets upgraded immediately to a penalty like they have to be teams have to be forced to scrummage and there's no way around that it's part of our game and it is a very critical part of our, our game maybe the most critical um, so I'd like to see that the wording of this one widened out so we fully understand what referees are going to do if teams are just deliberately you know not engaging basically and not and choosing not to scrummage okay the next one is the outlawing of the practice of the croc roll again this is all about player welfare it's long overdue i'll be interested to see how this is worded again because i think everybody knows what a croc roll is you know for the most part but i think it needs to be well defined in this scenario so that players know exactly what can be done what can't be done and obviously the referees go into the clubs and talk to players on a regular basis so that'll all be um, that'll all be uh, filled out during that process so overall these first two phases I'm, I'm pretty much a fan of all of these the scrum one like I say that needs to be really explored so that teams can't just decide not to scrummage and I'm sure that will be I'm certain that will be I'm sure they won't you know leave that uncovered but it'll be good to see exactly how that's fleshed out so those are what I think as I said there's a third fourth and fifth phase 
as well. The third phase is about closed law trials. The fourth phase is about specialist working groups. And the fifth phase is about rugby labs, which sounds thoroughly interesting. If you'd like me to make a video about those and expand on all of what's in there, let me know in the comments down below. Also, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about all these amendments. Uh, do you think they're good? Do you think they're positive? Do you think they're going to have the outcomes that are hoped for them? It'd be good to hear from you. We'll have a good old discussion about it. And, you know, I think rugby evolves and it's always been evolving since the, the day of, you know, since it began. So, you know, I'm not afraid of changes, but as long as the core game, you know, the core principles stay the same, I think the game's improved wildly. Uh, since the time I've been involved in it and you know I'm happy for that to continue as I said in the comments down below and I'll join you there for a friendly conversation give this video a thumbs up while you're down there if you don't mind it helps other people find it and you can subscribe there you can watch that one next and don't forget to get out and play